This episode of Grumpy Old Geeks is brought to you by FreshBooks. FreshBooks cloud accounting software helps freelancers master their admin and makes invoicing a breeze. Go to FreshBooks.com slash Grumpy and start your free 30-day trial with no credit card required. Tell them GOG sent you. Today's show is also brought to you by Eero. For free overnight shipping to the U.S. or Canada, visit Eero.com and at checkout select overnight shipping, then enter promo code GOG to make it free. Grumpy Old Geeks, a weekly talk show hosted by Brian Schulmeister and Jason DeFilippo, discussing the finer points of what went wrong on the internet and who's to blame. Welcome to Grumpy Old Geeks. I'm Jason DeFilippo. And I'm Brian Schulmeister. We are back after our break. How was your holiday? Uh, it was great. It was exhausting. Um, sister came down, her two kids, my kid, exhausting Ugh. everywhere, but... Ate lots of turkey. There you go. There's always that. Didn't look at tech news for a whole week. It was glorious. The problem with not looking at tech news is then the rest of the news was front and center. And I'm like, I don't have my tech news to buffer it. Damn it. Or to dilute, <laughs> you know, I, I, I dilute all the feels with the tech news of all the other crap that's out there. And I didn't have any feels dilution. And so it was kind of miserable to just and I, I avoided it, but it still seeps in everywhere, no matter where you turn. Yeah. Now, I got I do have a little bit of follow up. Yes. And I think we, this was like months ago that we talked about this. We we're talking about robo calls. Yes. And you were getting inundated with robo calls big time. A very specific. I was getting inundated with uh, this is the police or the Federal Bureau of Investigation uh, tax, dis- tax, whatever. And it was all, you know, it was ridiculous. They were all. Pre-recorded uh, bullcrap about how supposedly I was in trouble with the government and I this is the last chance. Otherwise, I'd be going to jail and I just needed to call back this number and give them information and pay them lots of money. And I was getting, I'd say, two a day for a period of almost two months. Yep. And uh, but you don't you haven't gotten those anymore, have you? No, they've completely stopped. Well, it turns out that the federal government has been doing its job after all. Why? Hey, they identified six of the companies that were doing this. And uh, 24 of them have been taken into custody, and uh, basically the last head guy in the U.S. has uh, pleaded guilty. There are 32 more suspects who do remain at large in India, go figure. And Mm -hmm. uh, so you may get these again in the future, but yeah, for the most part, it looks like they got them. Good. Uh, Yeah. Hey, I... Thanks for not firing everybody. And some people in our in our government are still doing what they should be doing. You know, <laughs> do not call lists don't work. None of that stuff works anymore. So we need these task forces out there taking these people down because, I mean, they're scary notices. You know, they really are. And, and it, if you're not savvy to this stuff and, and you know, having worked on the Internet for uh, way too damn long, I, I, yeah. I'm aware. You know, we know I, I'm immediately suspect of everything. I assume scan a- until proven otherwise. Uh, but most people don't do that. Uh, you know, I think about my parents. If they were to get the call like this, they would probably call the number. Yeah. So I have unfortunately had many, 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 many dealings with the IRS. And I know there's one <laughs> thing that they do not do. And that's call you. No, they do not call you. They just send you angry letters. They send you very scary letters, which is a little bit worse. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm glad this has been shut down. Yeah, I wish the do not call list actually worked because I was looking at my block list on my phone the other day. It is long. Yeah, mine too. Really, really long. Yeah, I I don't get these tax calls anymore, but at least one or two a week uh, of, you know, random sales things and random, you know, just random scams. It's it's a. it's well, I guess it's the downside of everybody getting rid of landlines and only having cell phones because now they target cell phones. Yeah, and they do that really crafty thing where they will take your area code and then the first three numbers of your prefix, and then just yes. they, if they have a random number that matches that in their pool, they will call you from that so it looks like it's somebody in your neighborhood. But that's only clever until you know the secret. Like, now I would never... I don't know anybody in my neighborhood. I, I just don't answer any call that comes from the, a similar number to mine. <laughs> exactly. I don't either, because my phone's from San Francisco. Right. You know, it's like I, I definitely don't have anybody calling me from San Francisco, especially not the exact number that I signed up for. Somebody could be calling you with a great job offer. Come back and work at a startup, Jason. <laughs> no, thank you. In the news. Brian, you have talked about regulation in Bitcoin for quite some time, saying we need more of it. We need more of it. We need more of it. Regulation that is I not think- Bitcoin. Well, we've got tons of Bitcoins around. We've got all kinds of coins. Um, I, I believe in regulation. I like regulation. I like bigger government. <laughs> <Okay>. So, 
You a liberal cuck? <laughs> yeah, I am. I'm just a liberal cuck. But uh, particularly when it involves uh, you know, people's livelihoods. I, I think regulation is good. I think regulation should uh, definitely exist for startup currencies. We have mildly <laughs> differing opinions on this. I think if you're dumb enough to invest in it, you're dumb enough to lose it. But uh, we can talk about that later. <laughs> uh, Bitcoin futures trading just got the green light from U.S. regulators, though. So you will be able to make money on Bitcoin and not actually own any soon. Right. Which is fine. I guess that's uh, it might, why not. You know, we, we we legalize gambling on everything. We don't call it gambling. We call no, it it's trading. Not, but it's called yeah, futures but trading. <laughs> yes. Futures trading is gambling. And uh, sure. Yeah, I, I'm down with that. No problem with that whatsoever. If this thing is going to exist, why not? But you're betting on something that isn't regulated. So isn't there. So the betting portion is regulated, but what you're betting on is not. Yes. It, it kind of odd, know, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like, you know, OK, we're going to have football betting. But we're not going to have anybody regulating if the players are on steroids or cheating or colluding. <laughs> you know, it's like, hmm, because there's a lot of it's Bitcoin like, uh... people out there who who make these markets fluctuate massively with, mm -hmm. you know, just moving some coin around. And I think this just opens it up for another wave of people to game the system. Well, it does. And but I, my feeling is it's, it's a temporary situation the, uh, the only way that any of these uh, bitcoin we just use bitcoin generically like we say kleenex now right that's the way it works and the only way that any any one of these things is going to exist become mainstream and become formalized and become a real thing is for it to get regulated and that's coming governments are not going to just let this keep going it's just not going to happen yeah the thing is though it's kind of like since it's just technology and it's just out there in the ether and that anybody can download the software and make their own coin, how do you regulate <laughs> like the smaller stuff? Yeah, that's the way I see it going. And, the, the, you know, the futures trading isn't going to be on the smaller stuff where people just made it. It's going to be on the established it's, big yeah, things. And that's what's going to create a real, yeah, a real financial market for this. So, yeah, well, <laughs> that's all <laughs> I had on the the futures trading because I will not be doing either. I'm still trying to work through the book, but I, I think learning how to program Bitcoin and learning more about just the more fundamentals of it, maybe not the best way to go about it. Here's the problem I think I'm having with it. When I open up the Bitcoin book, I am so fucking bored, I fall asleep. <laughs> I can't get through more yeah. than like five or ten pages, and I'm like, oh, really? I really just don't care about it enough. Yeah. I, need to find, I need to find something that, that grabs me with it. And, and so far, it's just, you know... There's, there's nothing that's really got out, got me juiced about it because I'm not buying it because I don't believe in it and neither do you. So we need to find somebody to come on the show to be our, our, our cryptocurrency czar. I actually think I might have someone. So stay tuned. We, All right. I, I, there's a friend of mine that's very into this. Uh, you can tell people that are very into Bitcoin and this sort of stuff because they become basically crazed evangelists that uh, you know ignore all the bad news and just continue to push, push, push. You should buy, you should buy, you should buy. It's the best thing ever. They're like vegans at a dinner party. They won't shut the fuck up. Exactly. So I'll get one of those guys on. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, we, this comes from Victor uh, Kinnikin. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know where he sent this in from. Might have been on Facebook or Twitter's. Who? I can't I think remember. It was the tweets. The tweets. Okay. Well, Victor sent this one in. An Ethereum startup just vanished after people invested $374,000. So Kickstarter is not the only <laughs> new way to scam money out of people. <laughs> I, I mean, this is the this is what interests me in in Bitcoin. This is this is or Ethereum or whatever the hell you want to do it. This is my in. I like watching people get bamboozled. Yeah, and I like it's called <laughs> Con Fido. So it's got con, <laughs> it's got Con right in the name. Come on, right there, right in the name. Unbelievable. Yeah, this is uh, uh, this is the problem with lack of regulation. And I found an article that kind of per perfectly encapsulated my entire thoughts on Bitcoin. Uh, the title alone is basically almost all you need. Hey, idiots, you're going to lose all your money on Bitcoin, idiots. <laughs> this is over at Splinter News. Bitcoin is fake and a made-up scam. Can you ar articulate what it is? Bullshit jargon that means nothing. You. Hell no. All we can say for sure about this imaginary coin is that it's going to cost you a bundle, sucker. Now, you can go ahead and just read this whole thing, and, and obviously the evangelists will say this is a load of shit, but, uh, you know, if you're... This is very funny, and I agree with this article 100%. Go check it out in the show notes. And uh, I posted this on my social feeds, and a friend of mine on Facebook read the article, and uh, she posted, I mean, isn't all cryptocurrency a fake and made-up scam? I do press releases for penny stock companies starting up their own cryptocurrency every day of the week. Weedcoin, Bitweed, Cryptoloose, and those are just from this week. 
Nice. So, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, you know. And, uh, of course, friend of the show, David Teeter, sent us some really interesting things. Uh, this is all about cryptocurrencies. And if it is true, he says they should be immediately banned. And he sent us two links. One is a gigantic Reddit thread on uh, Bitcoin power consumption. And the other is from powercompare.co.uk, which says Bitcoin mining is now consuming more electricity than 159 countries, including Ireland and most countries in Africa. So awesome use of our natural resources. Way to go, guys. <laughs> yeah. So I agree with this. I mean, if th- that's a stunning amount of electricity being consumed uh, just for Bitcoin because a bunch of people are scamming the system to get rich really quick. That's awesome. Uh, I mean, it's not scamming the system. It's it's what it's built to do. You're supposed to mine the coin to make the right. coin so you can have the coin. But it's just it's yes. part of the stupid system. And it's in that my, I have a little funny follow up here because uh, this is from Futurism. Energy saving LED light bulbs are contributing to light pollution. So we finally have these new energy efficient lights that save us electricity that people can then go use on Bitcoin and people are installing them everywhere. But the problem is they are much brighter in some cases and they can run all the time. So they're lighting up their cities at night, which is just making yeah. light pollution worse. Look, it's human nature, isn't it? It's such mm-hmm. a it's such a commentary on just who we are as a, as a people. I, I'm guilty of this. I put in LED light bulbs throughout my entire house. I will just kind of leave them on. I forget. <laughs> uh, or I just go, it's no big deal. It's not really costing me anything. My bill is down a lot. I won't like, uh, I'll just leave a light on when I leave the house, which in the past I never would have done before because I'll just, I'll have already put my shoes on. And I'm like, I'm not going to walk back to the bedroom. It's an LED. No big deal. Yeah. It's so <laughs> funny. Like we grew up with everybody telling us and training us to turn the lights off when you leave a room because it's wasteful. And now, mm-hmm. yeah, who cares? And I get these, my electric bills, I get these graphs. I don't know if you have this out there yet, but mine shows me my usage, what is like common. And then it compares me to my neighbors and shows me where I rank in my neighbors. And then it gamifies my damn electricity bill. That's kind of cool. I don't get that. My electricity bill shows me my own previous usage, like from la- last year or the year before or however long I've been signed up with them, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, it shows me my year before rate. The current rate, but then also what an efficient home looks like and then what my neighbors look like. And Hmm. last year I was kicking everybody's ass, right? (laughs) I mean, I had almost no electricity usage because I never left my room. You know, I got got my computer here. I'm typing away, doing my thing. And I was just killing it. And this year, like halfway through the summer, I got my, my bill and I was like double the neighborhood average. And I'm like, what happened? Dawn's on me. I got... Uh, let's see here. I got an Xbox One, which is always <laughs> plugged in, but it's it does that phantom power thing, you know, that vampire power where it's yeah. it's not really on, but it is. Uh, but it is. Yes. Yep. Uh, big TV. Same thing. And a bunch of other stuff like Apple TV, like basically my whole media center. And what I realized was, hey, you know what? If I just flip the power switch on the power strip and turn that off so nothing's leaching, even though everything is off. Right. Nothing is technically mm-hmm. on. If I turn off the power strip, my u- my electrical usage for the month went down by like 30 percent. That's crazy. It is insane. And I also got one of those power strips that um, has like a master so you can plug your TV into it. And then everything else in the strip is off until you turn the TV on, which also cuts down on that kind of stuff. But yes, welcome to Electricity Matters here on Grumpy Old Geeks. <laughs> I just thought it was... <laughs> Just you got me on the LED light bulb thing. But yeah, it's an easy way to save a lot of a lot of money on the electricity because, you know, I think my bill went down like 70 bucks just by flipping off the the TV that I wasn't using anyway. All right. Well, next week we'll talk conserving water. Yes, we will. And uh, and the week after that, mulching for fun and profit. Mm, You can get one that looks like the Death Star. (laughs) God. Uh, Speaking of the Death Star, Microsoft has a new headquarters that they just unveiled that they will be building. And I thought this was interesting because I looked at it and like, look, it looked like a decent campus. Nothing crazy like a spaceship or anything. You know, they weren't they weren't going full Death Star. Have you been to their campus before? No, I've not. Uh, I've been to both Apple and Microsoft's. Well, not Apple's new one. Um, Microsoft's campus is great. I, I'm happy that they're revamping it and doing some rework on it. But it's a beautiful campus. It's lots of open green space. It's awesome. Well, the thing that caught my eye was there are two giant soccer fields. Yes. So I thought I thought that was actually pretty cool. I'm like they have two little little baseball diamonds and then two massive soccer fields. So I'm like, ah, somebody likes the footy over there. That's right. Well, Seattle is of is quite the uh quite the football town up there. Really? I figured it'd be raining too much. 
Well, Seattle's team is great uh, and a huge, huge fan base. So kind of makes sense. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, I found this article in TechCrunch, this next one. We're going back to some self-driving car news. Mm. I had no idea GM was so far along in their technology. Right. They've got a fleet of self-driving cars continually on the streets of San Francisco. Really? Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that wasn't supposed to be legal. That's why everybody went to Phoenix. No, no, no. Here's the here's the thing. There are Uber got in the news because they didn't get the license. Oh, right. The regulations. Yeah, they didn't get the license. <laughs> and then the first day it ran two stoplights. So, yeah, that's why they were in the news. If you follow the rules, you can be driving around with your uh, they've got a. it's called a cruise uh, and mm -hmm. it's pretty damn ugly. Did you take a look at it? Yeah. It is it hideous. Is. It's, it's... Yeah. It's right out of Demolition Man. It really looks like it could be in Demolition Man. <laughs> but yeah, these things are these things are cooking around San Francisco. So I I think G like GM has been trying to kind of stay under the radar, no pun intended, or stay under the LIDAR, and are just gonna come out like a juggernaut at some point and just crush everybody. Well, it would, it would make sense. They've certainly got the market share and and you know, they can do it. Well, and the brain trust and the yeah, you know, it's mm -hmm. yeah. they know how to make cars. Everybody else is yes, dicking they're... around with other stuff. And he's like, <laughs> we've been making cars for a really long time. So we're just going to slap yeah. some light on it and off we go. That's right. Now let's talk about AI for a second. Okay. <laughs> Your favorite topic. Yes, it is. Uh, NASA has an AI drone that they call it. Uh, and they put it up against a human pilot and it lost. Now, right. I found this one on the verge and... Uh, the, the whole thing. Watch it. Watch the big NASA AI drone race thing. So I went and I watched it. They start off the video by saying, we built this, we built this course and then we mapped it and then we downloaded the map to the drone. I'm like, if you're drawing a map and you're giving it to the fucking drone, that's not AI. You just gave it a map. It told it where to fly. It's a self-driving <laughs> drone with a map. <laughs> it's a self-driving drone with a map. Where's the AI and all that? Tell me, tell there, me that. There isn't any. There isn't any. <laughs> And that's why I had to put this next story in our show notes as well, which I would have ignored completely. Facebook is using AI to tell if you're suicidal. Here's what this really means. This entire article isn't about Facebook's system, which supposedly will cap, you know, it'll warn you and say, do you need help and offer help if if Facebook thinks you're posting things that may mean you're suicidal. This entire article is about it's not fucking AI. Right. <laughs> but at least <laughs> so hey, this hey. is awesome. In the title, they actually did put quotes around AI. They put quotes around AI, and they go to great lengths in this article to say it is nothing other than pattern recognition. Yeah. And then a human actually looks at it. So again, again, people, where's the fucking AI? No, nah, this is sentiment analysis and, and you know, basically decision trees. Uh, I like how like a, a month and a half ago, we said we were done with this and we're right back at it. They, they won't stop talking about it. So I guess, yeah. I know. Yeah, it's, it's it's gotten to the point where like when Subway opens up a new store, they say they're going to have AI subs. I'm right. just it's oh, <laughs> freaking ridiculous. So let's talk about another company that you and I both love, Snapchat. Oh well, I I just don't care about Snapchat, but yeah. Well, they're, they they've realized that all of us oldies don't care about Snapchat, and that's a problem for their market share. So they've rolled out a completely new design that gets rid of the you know mystical Harry Potter esque uh, lack of complete user interface, and actually has a real UI to it. So we understand what we're doing. Not that any of us are going to get on it anyways. Uh, but they also have a plan to save us from fake news. How? What is their plan? What is the plan? Well, their high-minded plan is to clearly separate social stream from the news stream, which is exactly what Facebook has discussed already doing as well. So except maybe it'll work, except maybe it won't because none of us are on Snapchat and we don't care. And it might work on Facebook, but Facebook is doing it for obvious other reasons. What they're doing it for is to screw businesses and make you pay to show up in the regular stream as opposed to the page stream. That's all Snapchat's really going to do as well. We, we all know that, that all of a sudden other things are going to be inserted into our separate social stream if they paid for it. Okay. And I don't really know. If, I don't think separation's really going to work. Uh, but who knows? It, it, it's obviously the bandwagon idea right now because uh, some hack tech writer over at Slate, Emily Mulholland, has come out with her big art article basically arguing that Instagram now needs to do this as well. OK, so Facebook is doing it. Snapchat just did it. And you came up with a brilliant idea of an article to say that, hey, what Instagram should do this. Well, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> Preach. Preach. Yeah. Now, I might have to take a look at Snapchat again just to see what they're doing. 
Uh, because I, I, I don't know anybody that's ever gone to Snapchat for their news. Do you? No. And we keep hearing... We keep hearing reports and articles and statistics that the the millennials are getting their news from Snapchat. I don't entirely buy it. I don't know. Then again, I don't really know any millennials anymore. So yeah, I'm, yeah, I don't think I do either. Who knows? I, <laughs> well, I don't don't rush to check your Snapchat yet because I think this is uh, this is a rolling out process. Because I looked at Snapchat before the show just to see if I uh, if uh, there was anything I could say about it and i still have the old version so i don't have a the newly updated uh old fogey version yet okay well let me know when the fogey version hits and i'll uh, go snap it up see what i did will there. do <laughs> yeah I, I see oh my god net neutrality news <sighs> here we go again or here, here we go again going. i don't know about you but i i mean i've gone i filled out all the petitions done my mm-hmm. done my duty i've even made some phone calls uh you've made some phone calls I have. I've called my Congress people. Wow, look at you. This is important. This is a big issue. And I can't believe I'm still arguing with people about it. I got in a Facebook argument and somebody was like, you just need to look at who's backing it. All the tech companies are backing it. Yes, because they're tech companies. Yeah. And that's how they make their living. It's on the internet and they don't want to pay the government more or they don't want to pay Comcast more to get their stuff promoted. They want it free and open and let the best man win and they've got all the monies anyways. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Um, yeah, I, we've got a couple of links in the show notes this week. The problem is it's like trying to pick and choose which are the best net neutrality articles. Mm-hmm. It's almost impossible because it's just everywhere. I can't spit without hitting a net neutrality article and how, how the sky is falling. It's terrible. It's, you know, and I agree it is. It is terrible. I've done everything I can now. So yeah, and you've, well, I actually haven't done everything I can because I have not called my congressman. I have to figure out who that is. Um, but I'm sure that there's a service out there that will do it for me and tell me where to go. I will check that out this week. Yeah. And I, I hope that we don't have to explain what what net neutrality means and getting rid of it and what their plan is and how it's going to affect us to anybody that's listening to the show anymore. But uh, if we do, we have links in the show notes. <laughs> you're you're going to get charged a lot more and you're going to get certain things shoved down your throat, whether you like it or not. It'll be, hey, it. if you want Twitter, that's three dollars. If you want Facebook, that'll be another three fifty. And yep, it's it's yeah. Look, and, we and if you really like Hulu, but Hulu's made their deal with Comcast, and Comcast's your provider, they're going to shove Netflix down your throat, and you're going to have you're going to have really bad buffering issues with Hulu. That's the way it works. That's not fair. It's bullshit. Mm-hmm. Uh, we should dig up the the old Ask a Ninja net neutrality video. I got to find that again. <laughs> that was that was one of the best ones. Still relevant. Well, and Jason, if you do decide to call your Congress people, it may not make a bit of difference whatsoever, because according to Hacker Noon and, and uh, one particular guy over there who's done a deep dive study himself, this guy, Jeff Cow, he's a data scientist, a software engineer, language nerd and big law refugee. Uh, he has done a natural language processing. Thank you so much for not saying AI. Although this this article probably would have gotten passed around a lot more if he would have. He used natural language processing techniques to analyze net neutrality comments submitted to the FCC from April through October 2017. And as he says, the results are disturbing. Uh, what he has discovered is that basically more than a million pro-repeal net neutrality comments were likely faked. Basically, bots are going in there and saying, no, we want this repealed. So all of us saying, no, we don't want this be- repealed are being beaten by bots. Okay, has he figured out who did it? Because that's the really interesting thing. No, no. So far, he's just able to kind of use this processing to figure out that at least a million of these things are definitely just complete spam and bullshit. This episode of Grumpy Old Geeks is brought to you by the new Eero and Eero Beacon. As a grumpy old geek, I've been dealing with crappy Wi-Fi ever since it was invented. And I'm glad to say that those days are done. Eero is my new Wi-Fi hero. Did you know that most extenders cut your bandwidth in half because they use only a single radio for inbound and outbound traffic? Well, now you do. My house was built in the 1880s from a solid block of lead. With that comes the expected Wi-Fi degradation from room to room. If I want good Wi-Fi in my office, then forget about it in the kitchen, in uh, the backyard or the basement. Don't even think about it. I installed my new second-generation Eero with two of their beacons strategically placed around the house, and now I've got full signal everywhere. I couldn't get a signal at all in my garage, and now I'm at full bars. No joke. And today I had a bunch of work to do in the basement, so I grabbed one of the beacons and took it all the way down there, and I had perfect Wi-Fi. Believe it or not. That's the great thing about these. You can just pick them up and move them around the house. If you need to go to a place where you're usually not, boom, there's your mesh network. 
The Eero beacons are genius. You just plug them into any outlet, and they create a total mesh network in your house, just like I said. And these aren't extenders. They talk to your Eero base station to spread the full signal throughout your home. Office buildings have had these systems for years, but they're way too expensive to have at home. Now, in just a few minutes, you can have an enterprise-grade Wi-Fi solution in your house that you control from your iOS or Android device. I've done them both. It works great. I unboxed mine, downloaded the app, and had my entire house covered in five minutes. Seriously. You just plug in the Eero to your existing router, and it creates an entirely new network for you. Place the beacons where you need more signal, and that's it. Bob's your uncle. The app's amazing, and it's got a built-in speed test, and you can see all of the devices attached to your network. It's so awesome, you're going to want to get one of these systems as soon as possible. So we've arranged for free overnight shipping to the U.S. or Canada. Visit Eero.com, that's E-E-R-O.com, and at checkout, select Overnight Shipping, then enter promo code G-O-G. Boom. Free overnight shipping to the U.S. and Canada. That's Eero.com, select Overnight Shipping, and use the code G-O-G. This episode is also brought to you by our good friends at FreshBooks. The internet has enabled more people to become self-employed professionals and small business owners. More connected and mobile, more autonomous, and working in new jobs that could not have been imagined just a few years ago. Only five to ten years ago, working for yourself was considered taboo and looked down upon. Today, one in three Americans is self-employed. With the growth of the internet, there's never been more opportunities for the self-employed. Trust me, I know. And if you listened to this show before, you know we're a couple of old hounds at the working for yourself racket. To meet this need, FreshBooks is excited to announce the launch of an all-new version of their cloud accounting software. FreshBooks has been redesigned from the ground up and custom-built for exactly the way you work. Get ready for the simplest way to be more productive, organized, and most importantly, get paid quickly. The all-new FreshBooks is not only ridiculously easy to use, it's also packed full of powerful features. Create and send professional-looking invoices in less than 30 seconds. Set up online payments with just a couple of clicks and get paid up to four days faster. See when your client has seen your invoice and put an end to those annoying guessing games. I use FreshBooks every day because we're not just taking their money to shield their product. I'm a user and a very satisfied one. FreshBooks is offering a 30-day unrestricted free trial to our listeners. To claim it, just go to FreshBooks.com slash Grumpy and enter Grumpy Old Geeks in the How Did You Hear About Us section. Being a freelancer and business owner is hard enough. Let FreshBooks help. That's FreshBooks.com slash Grumpy and enter Grumpy Old Geeks in the How Did You Hear About Us section. Ups and doodads. A couple weeks ago, I started talking about an app that I was using called Day One to do my journaling throughout the day. Yes. Uh, day One is now Day None for me. Uh-oh. <laughs> um, little problem they have there with their app. Hmm. It's uh, I, would, I would open it up in the morning. I would go create a new entry. I would type into it for about 10 or so minutes. I would hit done, and then it would erase everything I just did. Well, that would be <laughs> the exact opposite of what you're trying to accomplish then. It's a text editor that cannot save the file. <laughs> you had one job. <laughs> one job. Uh, how much did you pay for this again? A lot of money. Are you going to get a refund? I would. I am going to... Oh, wait. No support. <laughs> oh, actually, they do have support. Oh, here's the funny thing. So oh, I went to the site to try and get to support, but they had a live chat thing. So I opened the live chat and said, hey, we're not here right now, but leave your message and we'll get back to you generally within a day. So I mm-hmm. the message. I'm like, is this a known bug? Because this is bullshit. And I got a note back a little bit. Well, actually, let me back up the truck for a second. I, I wrote that and then I'm like, hey, let me go to the main site and see if I can... Uh, find a support thing where I can open a ticket like a normal person would. So I go to log in and then it says, you know, log in with your Apple ID because I bought it through the Apple store. So I try to do that 500 token error on not being able to log in. So I go back to the chat and I type in, here's another bug you got. Is this an own issue too? So right. uh, within about seven hours, I got a note back saying, Hey, we fixed the login issue. Try it now. And I'm like, yep, that works. Um, then they got another thing back said, yes, this is a known bug and we're working on a fix for it. I'm like, Right. You should work really fast on that fix because <laughs> you are... <laughs> it is the one thing that your product is supposed to do. <laughs> you have one job. <laughs> Save the <laughs> shit that I type. Ugh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I so... still just use my text to uh, my Apple text program. It's fantastic. Notes. Notes. Yeah. Yep. Right. Well, that, that's what I'm doing. I'm actually going into notes and I use a text expander snippet to mark the date and time. And then write what I was going to write. So later on, once they fix it, I can go back so it's in one spot. And uh, I would like it all in one place because it does have some nice features to it when it fucking works. 
Sorry, I'm a little agitated yeah. by the fact that I spent That's like okay. 40 bucks on an app and the iOS versions and counterparts, and the thing cannot save a file. Well, let's uh, let's go. Well, first, I want to say uh, rest in peace to instant messaging. I launched my Adium client for the very last time last week, Aww. as I mutually discussed with the one person I was still using instant message with. Uh, yeah, we're done with this, right? And we'll just switch to texting. Yep. OK. <laughs> uh, sad moment. I mean, you still have 14 more days or as of this recording, because uh, uh, AIM, AOL's instant messenger service and kind of the last man standing will shut down once and for all on December 15th. But uh, I have launched for my final time sadly oh, sadly it's kind of the end of the, like the end of truman show when the when it's all over and everybody looks at each other and goes hey what's on another channel let's move on <laughs> you know no exactly kind of like uh it's over next moving on <laughs> exactly now let me go ahead and start my rants about various technologies that i've experienced over the last two weeks since we've been off uh before we sw- we went off the air for a little break i announced that i had gotten a step counter watch nothing terribly fancy uh cheap cheerful works supposedly great or does it <laughs> Because I've been noticing that there are, I still am running the Argus app on my phone, which is also a step counter Mm -hmm. and everything. Now, granted, I do do bike rides and they may calculate bike rides differently. They may even count steps differently. I wouldn't know because there's no documentation and there's no support (laughs) and there's no manual. So I don't know how any of these things are calculated. What I do know is when I take my kid out for the morning walk, Argus tells me I've done 3,027 steps. My watch tells me I've done 1,032 steps. At the end of the day yesterday, my watch told me I had just beat 10,000 steps. Argus told me I was at 17,000 steps. This is a significant difference between the two counts not a 500 steps here or there totally get that thousands thousands it's like a third difference between argus and my watch so how many fucking steps am i actually taking i'm gonna have to go buy one of those cheap little pedometers like the old school non-techie ones and i'm gonna wear like 18 things on me to find (laughs) out how many steps i'm actually taking which one's right like this is like no joke because this is kind of like my fitness program is beat 10,000 steps a day, preferably 15,000. That's what I'm shooting for. But I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Well, it's because you're kind of using the jankiest forms of tracking that you can. You've got that. Your, your I have a $30- $1,000 phone, my friend. <laughs> yes, but it, it's a phone. It's not a fitness tracker. It's not designed it's to on be. me. It should be. Oh, the GPS is, is, is spot on. It can tell if I've moved half a step or not. Why is it off? Because, well, <sighs> look at your Argus app. Maybe it's a piece of shit. I, I got to tell you, my my Apple Watch and the and the Fitbit were perfect. They were within, you know, at 14,000 steps, there was a variance of less than 100 steps between them. So both of those are right. extremely accurate. Got to say that. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Mm-hmm. I tested my watch against my treadmill because unlike, you know, just being out and about and walking, I'm not going to sit there and count a thousand steps, right? Right. My treadmill, desk treadmill, actually does count exact steps. Because it's got a sensor in it that relays it to the little uh, feed out or you know readout on the control panel that's on my desk. Right. So I did my Apple Watch for an indoor run or an indoor walk, which just tracks actual steps. It yes. was also under it was um it was like nine eighty when the treadmill said a thousand. And that was probably because I put my hands on the desk to type something for a second, so my arm wasn't moving. Right. But so these are accurate. Yes, they cost more money, but they're much more accurate. Is all I'm saying. So if you want to, if you really want to be accurate, you got to spend a few bucks. Well, I I believe that wife is getting me the Apple Watch, whether I want it or not, for Christmas. So uh, expect in a January <laughs> show, uh, I will compare Argus versus my cheap watch versus my Apple Watch versus a crap pedometer i'm gonna go buy it and we'll see <laughs> we'll see where i'm gonna wear four different things tracking my steps for a day and see what happens well i already gave you a fitbit but you lost it so yeah that, that's in a bar somewhere yeah that's where they somebody's gen- enjoying that mine are usually at the <laughs> bottom of a washing machine somewhere in some hotel oh quick note about that i accidentally washed my uh, my airpods a second time and dried them a second time still work perfectly wow <laughs> in the case don't recommend it yeah in the case or without <laughs> i forgot Without, without. Okay. You know, my whole thing when I was crapping on these when they were first announced is they're going to fall out of people's ears left, right, and center. That is apparently not the issue. The issue is you forget that they're in your pockets. Okay. I've <laughs> never had that start problem. Your laundry. <laughs> <laughs> I've had it twice now. Still works. Yeah, so you have other things to do. That's your, your issue. Yeah, well, you know, kid, 
uh, diaper change, all the sorts of stuff that happens when you run into the house. Yeah. And then, you know, poop on the clothes. So you throw the clothes immediately into the laundry with the AirPods. So. Uh, there you go. Yeah. So, all right. So, battle number two. So somebody pooped on your AirPods is, is what it all comes down to. It kind of comes down to that and survive that just fine. So my second battle, uh, the last uh, two weeks, uh, Alexa has gotten a bit shitty on me. And again, no fucking manuals, no fucking support. No way to fix anything yourself because they push up updates and it just happens. So things change on you. Uh, Alexa and Spotify are no longer uh, doing well with each other. Again? Now, it's not it's not across the board. It's like specific, all of a sudden you just you just can't find specific artists, says, uh, you know, and, and sadly, it's the ones that my kids my kid likes so i'm playing those all the time cannot find casper baby pants anymore i we do not find that artist cannot play rockabye baby anymore we do not find that artist so uh, there's no way to fix it i tried i googled extensively it just will not fix you so you go to the workaround the workaround is you create a playlist and then you just tell it to play the playlist right so now i'm dragging all the stuff in i'm trying to create all these playlists it's not recognizing the playlist. Oh, man. So then I go Google this shit again, and somebody says, okay, you have to rename the playlist and then name it back. That worked once. <laughs> didn't work for the other one. <sighs> the stuff is supposed to be making our lives easier and better, and all it does is fuck you. <laughs> uh, you know what you have to do now? You have to go buy a boombox. That's it. I. I'd ra- I I swear to God, I would go back to like having a hundred disc CD player at this point. Yeah, <laughs> or, so, or something. This is just <laughs> ridiculous. I I feel just like I felt like the first time that I had gotten all my music into iTunes and it crashed and destroyed my library. Yeah. I'm starting to feel that way again. Yeah, one step forward, ten steps back. Oh God, it's just horrible. If anybody is having this problem with this Alexa with Alexa and has been able to fix it with Spotify, I, please please let me know because I just can't anymore. Yeah, I've given up on that. I still use Pandora with it, which has has thankfully not gotten rid of any of my my you know my playlists or my stations as they call them on Pandora, and mm-hmm. that's pretty much the only way I play music now with it. I tried everything with Spotify, and half there's like two albums that'll play. I, like I can play Fables of the Reconstruction, and my brain hurts from Screeching Weasel. That's about it. <laughs> everything else <laughs> will play some random like you know hip hop rap crap, and I'm just like what. It, it, it does always seem to default to hip hop or rap, doesn't it? Yes, it always. Does. Like anytime I ask it to play uh, Casper Baby Pants and it wasn't finding it, it started playing like this crazy rap stuff from like Baby Rap G or something, whatever the hell the guy's name was. Yeah. It's, it's so annoying. Interesting. Ah, anyways, yeah, it's just it's it just worked so well for so long, and then all of a sudden it just stops. And Spotify doesn't have any customer support. Amazon doesn't have any customer support. Amazon, you know, half the posts in Amazon's customer support blame Spotify. All the posts in <laughs> Spotify's customer support blame a- Amazon. It's a mess. Oh, wait till Siri gets in the picture. You're gonna be twice as yeah. happy. Oh yeah, God. like I, the problem with Siri is I want to I want to switch to Apple's home, whatever they're going to call it when it comes out. But then I realized I can't go to Apple Music because I still have such a big iTunes library. So I can never really switch unless they support Spotify. We'll see. Oh, man, that's right. Even though they jumped it up to one hundred and twenty five thousand, you still have more than that. So, yep. Yeah. So I can never switch to Apple Music unless they ever fix that, which they never will. Or maybe throw some shit away. You can always do that. I like my music. You're never going to listen to any of that stuff anymore. Get get, get over it. Come on. There's got to be stuff in there you can get rid of. Maybe when the kid's 18. I'll get back to it. Okay. Uh, now, I threw this one here in, uh, in the old apps and doodads because uh, I figured at this point you should be nice and wound up. And uh, we're, mm-hmm. it's, a, it's another AI feature. And uh, oh, okay. this time it comes from Tinder, of all mm-hmm. people. Well, this will <laughs> never affect me being married with a child, but okay. It'll never affect me either because I'm never going to use Tinder. But what I what I find humorous here is it's it's about this new feature they have called a super like. Ooh. So every now and again, after you've, you know, swiped and it's got a fairly decent picture of who you fancy and who you don't, it'll pop up four people, and one of which whom you can super like. And it'll send them, you know, it's like, hey, I really dig you, I guess. And you can move on from there. Now couldn't you just send them a message that says, hey, I super like you? Yeah, I'm going to get to that here. <laughs> okay. Um, now, you know, there, there are free versions of Tinder and there are paid versions of Tinder. So mm-hmm. if you have the free version, you can do one super like a day. But if you pay, you can do up to five. Right. Right. Okay. okay. Mm-hmm. Now, the whole thing about this is Tinder is meant to match people, right? 
that's the job, right? You're there to to hook up. No, they're they're not like Match.com. They just present people in your area, and, and you decide if you like them. There's no like algorithm going through, and you're not filling out anything like I like long hikes and beach walks. There is an algorithm though, because they're using all that data to figure out who to present to you next. Ah, okay. There is smarts behind it because they've been to the AI conferences and told everybody <laughs> about it. Trust me. Okay. So yes, now this this super like feature is using quote unquote AI to figure out mm-hmm. who it should you know present to you in your super like list. What I'm saying here though is, isn't this just the basic feature of what the fucking thing should do to begin with? It's like we're going to charge you more to show you people you might really like, but the rest of the time you're just going to get people you might sort of like. We're saving the good stuff for later. <laughs> These people you really <laughs> might like. We want a couple bucks so you can really tell them that you really like them. It's it seems very very dirty pool to me. What it seems to me and this is just me being, you know, typical me and not believing anybody cuz everybody fucking lies. I think this is just this is preying on human nature. This is a psychological scam and the exact same people are being presented to you whether they're super likes or not. This is just a way to like if I pay, I'm going to get laid. That's all <laughs> this is doing. Uh, it, but I am so like, I, I just don't believe anyone. I think all these companies are fucking lying. I think they are all lying. I, I don't think that there's any AI behind this at all. I think this is complete and utter bullshit. Because you know why? Because it's something that we would have done. <laughs> totally. This is something that we would have built into things to gamify it and to get people more engaged. And would it, would it have actually done anything? No. no. You get that green crystal just randomly because, exactly. because we make you think you can get the green crystal. Now you want the green crystal, right? That's the way it works. Is there anything behind you getting the green crystal? No. Pure random number generator. That's all. It is. Here we go. Size of array minus one into rand. Pick a slice. There you go. Oh, that's I can't even tell it. you how many. I, that's all I did for a while. I <laughs> built that again and again and again. And that's all these motherfuckers are doing, except now they're charging you money for it. I wish we would have thought of that step. Yeah, that's the one we always missed. We were really good at giving everybody fake data. But when it comes down yep. to charging for it, we really sucked. Yep. Uh, so getting back to some real software here, uh, I got screens for Mac. Yes. And iOS. Have you okay. used screens before? I think you made me try to use it once for something. Um, I don't think it was me because I've never, I never had it. Okay. No, this is nice though. I like it. If my parents, uh, had a Mac, I I would be using this to fix their computer all the time. Yeah. Because I mean, you've got back to my Mac kind of built in and you can do screen sharing on the network fairly easily if you have it turned on. Mm -hmm. The problem is when you leave the house Mm -hmm. and if you are like me, you're double natted off the router. So there's some tricky bits to get to the actual machines behind the front facing router. It's just a pain in the butt. Mm-hmm. So I invested in screens for Mac and iOS and the whole screens connect thing. So you have basically a demon that pings their server to let it know from the outside what your IP is. So when you leave the house, you can get back to your machine. I tested this last weekend. I got my whole, all, like my multiple machines at the, here at the house set up. Uh, Cause I, this, this comes from when I was in San Francisco, I couldn't get back to my studio machine and I needed to get something off of it, even though I left back to my Mac on and screen sharing and all that. And I, it wouldn't find it. So I tested this on my iPad. Mm -hmm. So I took my iPad Pro over to my dad's house, got on their network, popped it up, saw my machines, boom, right in. So that alone is worth the money if you need to get back to your Macs or if you like you have like, you know, a family member that you need to do remote support on. And it it just makes it easier if you set it up and then you can just pop in. Right. It's got a lot of other nice features, too. Like for a few extra bucks, you can use your uh, (laughs) um, use your iPhone as a trackpad, which I will never do. But it's also got some privacy filters. So most of the time, if, you, if you're if you logged into somebody's machine remotely, the screen will show what you're doing. You know, the screen will wake up right. and you can see it. There are privacy filters. So it will have like, I don't know if they call it curtain mode or something like that, but it'll it'll blank out the screen so people cannot see what you're doing, which is oh, that's good. very nice. Yeah. Yeah. So that's worth checking out for sure. Okay. And uh, remember Bear when Bear came out last year? I do. I do. Yeah, because it's, it's a, you know, it's a pretty notes app and everybody was trying to get rid of Evernote because Evernote just is a flaming Ugh. pile of dog turds. Yep. Well, one year in and I, I have canceled my subscription and <laughs> basically moved everything to the Apple Notes app. It's it works. Yep. It works. Bear was a bear to use. And I went back and I looked at their video on their website. Yes. 
if I'd have saw that, or if I'd have seen that even, saw, seen, who, who cares, <laughs> ah, grammar, uh, I never would have paid for it because it is, it's so bad. It is such hipster crap, you know, straight out of Silver Lake, I think this video was made in. Oh, right. man. Look, uh, you know, it's funny. You've taken a year uh, out, of, out of your life and you've, you've bought a number of different apps and you're right back with me using notes. Well, I wasn't. It's actually we, when uh, we started talking about notes, you told me you flipped over to it and I just paid for Bear. So I didn't want to, you know, I had a little sunk cost in there, but I've been using notes probably for about six or seven months now. And it really right. just does work. So I just I was too lazy to move all my stuff out of Bear. So I finally just took a couple of yep. days deleted crap and moved it over and it was much easier like trying to move everything from evernote into notes just did not work it was just a nightmare so yes. i kind of i kind of declared note bankruptcy and just started from scratch except for like a few technical things and it's much nicer i don't have, even have to look at all that old stuff so after day one started to you know basically not do the job that it was supposed to do mm -hmm. i was thinking where else could i save stuff before i went into notes i'm like oh scrivener Scrivener's usually good for this stuff i can save days as chapters uh, because it's made for writing novels or screenplays. It's a really great writing app. Yeah, I have it. Every now and then when I have pretensions of actually writing, uh, I, I've had the app forever. It's fantastic. Yeah. And so I went to the site because I'm on my new iMac. I didn't have it. So I went to go download it. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. They upgraded the website. Ooh, this looks fancy. Uh-oh. <laughs> that means they probably revved the app. <laughs> so <laughs> Scrivener 3 is out. It is very, very nice. Yes. I had to pay full price for it because I could not find my original... Well, I have my original serial number. I couldn't find out, like, there was one piece of information that I was missing. I think it was just the email address that I used mm -hmm. it with. And I tried every one that I could, and it was probably some old business address or some right. thing that's been gone. Because I looked at my receipt for when I bought Scrivener 2, and it was 2008. So I'm thinking, you know... <laughs> it's been a while. You can toss them some coin. I can, uh, I can honestly toss them a few bucks, <laughs> because they do write really good software. And for what it is, it's, it's amazing. And you know what they don't do? What? They don't charge you a subscription. You buy it. You own it. Yep. Yay. And <laughs> they've got great manuals. So. Yes, they actually provide documentation. There's a whole learn and support section on the website that covers Scrivener's core concepts. Uh, there's a walkthrough tutorial that you get when you first uh, boot the software up that shows you every feature in the software and how to use it. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And and at the very end, this is what I really loved. They're like, hey, look, we know that not every piece of software is for everybody so here's a list of book writing software for you that you can go use if you don't like scrivener and it's this massive list of every piece of book writing software that is on the market it's completely comprehensive and i thought damn that's a class move yeah that's a nice that's that, that's when you know you're good here here's everybody else's you'll come back <laughs> yeah you'll be back soon enough <laughs> 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 yeah, it is a great piece of software because you and I both like it and because we like all the core tenants, the fact that they provide documentation, the fact that they're not a subscription service, you buy it, you own it. The you hit save and when you come back, it's there. <laughs> yeah, it actually works. Yeah. They're definitely going to go out of business. There's no way they can last. <laughs> mm -mm. <laughs> so, yeah, if you if you if you do any word processing, if you have any pretensions of writing or if you just write a lot for anything, I can't recommend Scrivener enough. It's it's great. It, it can it can fit your needs even if you're not trying to write a book. Yeah, so. as a blogger, I use this constantly because if I was writing a long piece, I could just, you know, you make note cards and that's where you keep all your research. So if I was doing yep. like a long piece for Met Blogs back in the day, I would just get all my links, sort them in there and copy and paste stuff and move stuff around. It, it's it's just great for doing any writing where you have to have research or chapters or things like that. And you can move. Oh, my God. It's just so cool. If you write, go get it. Yep. And one last quick note about apps. I was able, I've been selling a bunch of stuff for a long time, particularly uh, since the kid was born. I decided, well, that's it for the music studio. If I want to write music, I'll just use software. So I've had all these different pieces that I've been selling left, right, and center. Um, I've, I, I know I bought some. You did buy some. And I finally sold my last piece of gear over the break, which was great. And I just want to say as a wrap up, uh, there are all these apps out there. There's Close Five, there's Let Go, Facebook has rolled out Facebook Marketplace, Next Door in their app, they have their own marketplace as well. Well, I placed all my stuff everywhere. All those apps are motherfucking useless. Forget it. Craigslist. Every single thing I sold was through Craigslist. Wow. All those apps, completely useless. I got hits that would just disappear. I got peep I got spam bots on all those, all those apps. Craigslist, every single piece right through there. So don't even bother with those stupid apps. That's good. Yeah, that's good to know because I got a lot of stuff that I'm unloading right now, too. And I was either going to do eBay or, or Craigslist. So now I'm just going to go with Craigslist. <laughs> Craigslist. 
Media Candy. We've talked about the great unbundling many, many times. Now there's all kinds of services online that uh, get different TV channels. Recode has built a fairly convenient tool uh, to find TV channels online. You could just type in what you want to watch. It will try to find it for you and show you where it's at. Free, pay, whatever. Obviously not Sweden. But uh, if you're in a pinch and you want to see something, or if you're thinking about ditching cable completely and want to make sure that you can see all the channels that you want, I highly recommend you go check out this link and uh, use the service that they built for us. It's kind Nice. I'm definitely going to have to use this because I'm getting ready to fire Hulu for their TV service because it's terrible. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's nobody that's got these TV services that work yet. So I know it's like, OK, I'll try. I'll get a trial for this one until the TV show's over and then I'll cancel the trial. I get another <laughs> one over here because, yeah, so far I've done YouTube TV. I've done Sling and I've done Hulu and none of them work. I'm like, yeah, get, 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 I just get the digital antenna out when I need to watch something. That's about it. Yeah, well, check out the tool. It might work for you. Uh, Netflix has confirmed that Stranger Things will return for a third season, surprising absolutely no one. I finished Stranger Things 2, huh. although should it be called Stranger Th- Things 2? That's like a movie thing. It's like second season of Stranger Things over the break. I loved it. I thought it was actually better than the first season, except for that one terrible episode. And all of you who have watched it know which one I'm talking about. Oh, which one is that? I liked them all. The punk one. The, the oh, punk that, sister. Was that was silly. That was a crap episode. The whole rest of it, amazing. Like I, I get a little dusty in the room at the in the last episode. It was yeah, it. it was good. It was, it was very well done. Like I said, I think better than the first season. So did you break your rule? Because you said you were going to be doing one a week. Was it you had to have a couple? I broke the rule over the break. I just needed some something to watch. So. There you go. So I've got a bunch of stuff that I watch. Uh, Chance season two on Hulu, which was the reason I signed back up for Hulu. Uh, it just finished mm-hmm. this week, and I loved it. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, it is the last chance. It looks like they wrapped up the whole thing. So it's a great standalone story. 20 episodes between the two seasons. I, you know, it's just really good. (laughs) That's all I'm going to say about it. And then over the break, I got Hunt for the Wilder People through uh, David Teeter and uh, Chen. They made me start watching it, but then we didn't finish it uh, because whiskey. (laughs) So I finally finished it when I got home. If you like sappy movies with Sam Neill, that's right up your alley. Uh, American Assassin. Love the books. The only reason I'm talking about this here is because I've reviewed most of the books from the Vince Flynn series here. And uh, yep, this is not. No, no, no. Pass. <laughs> it, there's never going to be another one. So don't waste your time. This was a terrible movie. Right. Uh, and I binged The Punisher on the old Netflix. Did you uh, watch Punisher yet? I did. I, I watched all of it over last week as well. I loved it. <laughs> I really for me personally, I just loved it. Made Iron Fist look like such a giant pussy. Iron Fist was horrible compared to this, definitely. This is probably, I would place this third. I still like Jessica Jones best, Daredevil, and then The Punisher. It was probably one of the grittier, more realistic ones. Uh, It was... (laughs) <laughs> my wife just walking through the room every time I was watching it. She's like, this is insanely over the top. <laughs> it violent. is ridiculous. It is, and it is. If you are not into ultra violent, I've just kept thinking about the, uh, you know, the clockwork orange thing ready for a bit of the old ultra violence. <laughs> uh, I-, I crapped on daredevil for having way too much Kung Fu. This has way too much violence. They could have cut it in half and it still would have been gruesome and over the top, but very well done. Highly enjoyable and just prepare yourself for lots of Yeah, blood. not for amateurs. I loved it. I loved every bit no. of it though. <laughs> I like I like the I like the ultra violence. Uh, yeah. uh Glitch is back for season two. This was that really strange uh New Zealand I think it's New Zealand. New Zealand or Australia, but I'm pretty sure it's New Zealand. Mm. A little kind of zombie sci fi story uh, picks up exactly where the first season left off. It's short. It's only six episodes. I didn't like it as much as the first season. Okay. Because the first season was a little bit more exciting, I thought, because you were trying to figure out what was going on. Now you kind of know what's going on, and I'm kind of like, not really caring that much. So, I, you know, I give Glitch Season 1 kind of an A-. minus. I give Glitch Season 2 like a C plus. Right. So. Well, I watched the entire first season of Master of None, the Aziz Ansari show that is very popular with the millennials. Everybody's all talking about it. Um, episode two, entitled Parents, uh, completely about immigrant parents and their offspring, is quite possibly the funniest thing I've seen in my entire life. Uh, my wife and I are both first generation American. Well, she's Canadian. I'm American. And we were just howling the entire episode. Uh, the rest of the show? Eh. I have to ask, are millennials just not into actual comedy? Do they prefer things being so obvious you can tell what the end of the episode will be in the first five minutes? 
Do they like shit acting? <laughs> I really don't understand why this is the show is so popular. Uh, but watch season one, episode two, if you're an immigrant uh, or if your parents were immigrants, because okay. you will die. Yeah, thank God. <laughs> OK, because I saw I, I read the first line of your your notes here and I'm like, oh, no, don't tell me he actually liked this piece of shit. <laughs> but fortunately, no. you didn't. I can't. I, I saw a little bit of it. I was over at my friend's house. They were watching it. They were howling and laughing. And I'm like, this is fucking terrible. What is, what is wrong with you people? But they loved it. They loved it. Lots lots of non jokes about avocado toast, Ugh. from as far as I can tell. And he just can't act at all. No. Can, not at all. No. I mean, nothing. Like, no. Cardboard could act nothing. better. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway so after i watched that i was i was very curious and i went on a bit of a stand-up kick so i watched his live at madison square garden show that was actually that funny, was funny but it was okay i mean but it's also the first half of the show is the entire first season of master of <laughs> yeah. none so I'm, so i'm assuming the second half of madison square garden show is the entire second season of master of probably none. um he's a good stand-up he can't act and, and the show is crap mm-hmm. so i did like the stand-up uh then i ended up watching jim gaffigan's latest uh cinco um, good. because netflix just basically just feeds you stand up after you watch yeah. one um that was very good if you're a dad it's all dad jokes mm-hmm. but and it's very clean but he's quite clever and very funny uh then i tried to watch trevor noah the new host of the late show or um whatever jimmy jimmy whatever stewart's Je- old john show was. stewart's john stewart <laughs> jimmy's yeah, yeah. Jimmy store jimmy jimmy stewart. Stewart. Yeah. Hey, jimmy stewart <laughs> yeah. here i i watched his one called afraid of the dark i got about 15 minutes into it and realized that i hadn't even attempted a chuckle so gave up oh, on it that's, didn't that's find it sad. funny at all i've watched all of his stand-up specials and i enjoyed them all i thought they were very smart yeah not into okay. it and finally i closed up with Patton oswalt's annihilation his latest it is funny and it is heartbreaking because as you know his his wife had just recently passed away um you know most of it's extremely funny some of it is just uh brutal um you know what a guy yeah the room got that's very dusty say. for part of it in there so <laughs> Yeah, it so it, it was fantastic, and I would say uh, you Trump snowflakes, you probably want to avoid that one. Yeah, he's not too nice to Trump. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> I I, and I didn't even put in any of my stand up stuff. I've watched like twelve different stand up specials over the break because it's just it's it's what's on. You know, half of them are yeah. actually ninety percent of them are crap, but you get you get ten percent that are decent. And so yeah. I grabbed a new podcast, the Moon Me podcast, Dana Moon's uh, podcast. She's a stand up comic down there in L A. And uh, it's it's mm-hmm. very, very uh, graphic and very funny. I enjoy it. Okay, cool. And I found a YouTube link that I thought was very interesting. Um, it's, it's, we just spent a long time talking about how bored we are by Bitcoin. So uh, how the economic machine works may not be sound terribly uh, exciting. Uh, but I, it's 30 minutes and it makes a shitload of its sense and totally explains our entire economic system in ways that make sense. And I would prefer that the entire current administration have to watch this it's really only 30 <laughs> minutes long he can he can pay attention that long here's yeah. the deal it's actually 15 minutes long because you can 2 exit because he kind of talks slow and you don't lose anything in the 2x and that's true trust me on that one you can watch that at 2x <laughs> and retain everything but it wasn't bad i'm only well i'm only seven minutes in but uh three and a half minutes technically but yeah not bad um and titanic is returning next week to cinemas oh, god i hate this movie <laughs> think how i feel I spent a year of my life on that goddamn movie. So what am I going to do tomorrow? I know how you feel because you posted that you're going to go fucking watch I'm it. I'm going to go see it tomorrow. I'm going to watch that ship sink one more goddamn time. I'm going to watch Leo drown his sorry ass for this selfish girlfriend who can't scoot over on the door. And I'm going to love every second of it because it'll be the last time I ever have to see Titanic. That is, it is, I walked out of the theater. I hated this movie so much. Now, the only thing that I like about all of this right now is all the press it's getting is the fact that uh, James Cameron basically just said, (laughs) Leo dies because that's what the story demanded. (laughs) He was going to die no matter what. (laughs) He had to die. I don't care how big that door was. He was dying. (laughs) He was was never getting on that door. (laughs) Yeah, I think he's tired of answering that question. But yeah, it's uh, it's remastered. Looks like it might be a pretty show. So one last time, off we go, gents, into the the great blue beyond. At the library. Surprisingly, I've I've read two books this entire break. One was uh, I went back and I reread or re-listened to Stranger in a Strange Land Mm -hmm. because after the last uh, Highland book that I read, I was like, man. 
this book was good, but I really miss Stranger in a Strange Land. So I went back and re-listened to that. And God damn, that book is good. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I've reviewed it here before and uh, everybody should have read that book by now. If you haven't, get on it. Yep. And then I got Bonfire by Kristen Ritter. Okay. Also known as Jessica Jones. Yes. And I'm, I gave it a shot. I'm like, eh, it's in my feed. Uh, I, I see her talking about it all the time. It's getting decent reviews. So why not? Wasn't bad for a first time writer. It's a, like a suspense thrillery kind of book. Uh, like B minus, right. B, B minus. It wasn't bad. It was actually well better written than most of the sci-fi we've read recently. I feel like I want to interview her because I want to know, let's see, you are Kristen Ritter. You are Jessica Jones. You are making bank as an actress, a working actress in Hollywood who's in demand, who's not only acting, but you're also producing, making a lot of money. So now I'm going to go into an artistic endeavor that makes no money whatsoever. She wanted to do it. I'm going to write a book. <laughs> Well, have you looked at her Twitter feed, or I mean her Instagram feed? No. Because her other business is knitting. Oh, okay. Basically, knits and sells things online. She's a knitter, a writer, and an actress. So, she's triple threat. I like her more every day. Yep. And that's why I got the book. I'm like, you know what? I I like the cut of her jib, so I'm going to check out the book. Like I said, the book wasn't bad. All right. Maybe I'll give it a shot. I don't know. I actually... It's not not up your alley. It's... Oh, okay. You know, it's it's like a classic kind of thrillery thing. There's no... There's it's straight up. There's I mean normal. Yeah, gotcha. It's a normal book for normal people. You're not a normal guy. You need some. There's no like you know science fiction or ghosts or zombies or stuff like that. It's just normal. Right. <laughs> well, I watched way too much TV, uh, finishing Stranger Things and everything that we just talked about to actually read a book. But uh, Genome: The Extinction Files Book Two by A. G. Riddle has come out. So I downloaded that. I was going to start reading it, and then I realized I don't remember a goddamn thing that happened in the first book. So I went back and I skimmed through Pandemic, The Extinction Files Book 1, to catch myself up. So I'm prepared to actually read the second book now. Uh, was the first book good? I can't remember. Yes, yes. I, it was, you know. Well, like, I guess since you bought the second one. <laughs> yeah, I bought the second one. I believe it was, uh, it's not, you know, it's, it's quick. It's poop read. You know what I mean? I know what you mean. Yep. Yes. I'm pooping to Tim Ferriss right now. As, as one does, especially if one follows his diet. Security? Ha! All right, we're back this week with Dave Bittner from the Cyberwire. Are you guys all uh, full from Thanksgiving still? Turkeyed up? Ready to oh go? Oh my, uh, my goodness, I took a long nap. Uh, I have to say the day after Thanksgiving was one of the most relaxing days I can remember having in a long time. I, my, the house was quiet. The house was clean because, you know, <laughs> we, we, uh, we, we, my wife and I refer to it as the big lie, which is the, uh, the story that our house is actually this clean all the time, which of course it's not. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I want a sign for my house that says, pardon the mess. We actually live here. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, so I, I, I had a very lovely Thanksgiving break. It was a well, uh, well, uh, needed long weekend and, uh, it was great. How about you guys? All good. Can't complain. Yeah. Can't complain. Excellent. Ate a lot and, uh, you know, didn't read any tech news and tried to stay away from all news. So I was actually happy, happy for a brief <laughs> period of time. That's and nobody right. in my family talked politics. Woo-hoo. Well, there you go. There, there, that's half the battle, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, it is. Well, <laughs> it's good to be back, and uh, of course, the news didn't stop without us, so uh, what are we no. starting with here today? Well, I wanted to follow up a little bit on what uh, you and I talked about, Dave, uh, in our pre-Thanksgiving episode before Jason, uh, when Jason wasn't around, uh, the cell phone tracking issues uh, that we right. had discussed about how everybody knows where uh, you spend your Thanksgivings and things of that nature uh, that kind of terrified both of us. <laughs> well, the Supreme Court is currently hearing arguments in a case called Carpenter versus the United States. And the issue at hand is cell phone t- tower location data and law enforcement obtaining it without a warrant. So we are looking I- looking into uh, if privacy rights include location data, which would be very good for those of us who kind of want a little bit of privacy. Unfortunately, up until this case, uh, up until this point, all the lower courts have so far sided with the ability that uh, for people to get that data. So we will see if the Supreme right. Court will uh, hold up our privacy rights here or not. Right. And then there was that case in 2012 where uh, the Supreme Court uh, said that you need G- you need a warrant to for the F- basically for the FBI, for law enforcement to stick a GPS on someone's car. And mm-hmm. in that case, they also said, I think it was uh, Justice uh, Sotomayor who said that the third party doctrine, which is what enables them to uh, access this data, this metadata, um, uh, she said it's ill suited to the digital age. 
So yes. it'll be interesting to see how the Supremes come down on this. Um, I, 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 to me, it doesn't seem unreasonable just to require a warrant. If your case is good enough, why not yeah. get the warrant? And I, I suppose law enforcement would say that, well, it slows us down. And, um, you know, we, we – well, of course, they enjoy the ability to do it without a warrant. <laughs> um, yes. I heard an interesting, interesting coverage of this on NPR on – I believe it was um, Morning Edition – their Supreme Court reporter, whose name is escaping me right now, but um, she was comparing it to law enforcement's ability to basically put a tail on you. You know, they don't need a warrant to follow you around um, right. and and track your location from place to place. And so they were making the point that this is really the same thing as this. Of course, pri- as that, privacy people are saying, well, no, because with the cell phone tower data, you can go back and retroactively follow someone around, and you can do it for basically an unlimited amount of time. Yeah, and you, yeah. Oh, yeah. You can shake a tail, but you can't shake your cell phone. <laughs> right. Well, right, you exactly. can. You can throw your phone in the trash, I suppose, but then you're obviously probably doing something wrong. Yeah. So this is interesting because this is the law enforcement perspective. What we were talking about the previous week was was more private companies, but I would hope if the law enforcement is basically basically told you can't have this information, there would be some trickle down to private companies. Hopefully. Yeah, I would think so. And it's also going to be interesting to see what happens when GDPR goes into effect, you know, in May. Um, that's going to have a global impact on on privacy and, uh, you know, sharing of data and, and stuff like that. So um, uh, personally, I would love to see the Supreme Court come down on the side of privacy. Um, mm-hmm. But I really can't guess on this one because, like you said, Brian, you know, the lower courts have all uh, sided on the case of law – on the side of law, law enforcement. But yeah. the Supreme Supreme Court in this case just a few years ago seemed to recognize that maybe we're in a different era than we were when these third party doctrines first came into being. Yeah, so we'll see. This should uh we should know pretty quickly, I'd imagine. Yeah. So we'll find hopefully by next week we'll be discussing this and hope, hopefully privacy will win out. Uh I also have another little bit of news that uh, is involves our government and we we have made fun of in fact Jason and I had discussed for a while having a segment called Hack of the Week or breach of the week or something like that. So we we do make fun of these these uh, companies a lot. And uh, we've also talked about how some of these com- companies seem to be too big to fail, that it does not matter uh, what happens or how big the breaches are. They, they don't seem to suffer for it. Uh, right. It looks like the Senate might want to try to change that. Uh, top Democrats on the Senate Commerce Committee are renewing efforts to pass a law requiring companies to quickly notify consumers in the wake of a data breach. And uh, they are proposing jail time for executives who conceal data breaches. Now, I would not mind this. It was, what's really funny is as we, as you were reading that, I got a text message from friend of the show, Jeff Donaldson, and it is a picture of a letter that he has in his hand. It's, it's dated November 22nd, 2017. It says, Notice of Data Breach. Dear Jeff Donaldson, I am writing to let you know about a data security incident at Uber that affected your information. Uber deeply <laughs> regrets that this happened, and we <laughs> recommend that you closely review the information in this letter. And it goes on to say when the data was accessed and all that. And it, under what you can do, we recommend enrolling in Experian Identity Works and reviewing the additional <laughs> information below. Hmm. And yeah, they're not saying that they're going to pay. Oh, wait, hey, here we go. To assist you, we are also providing identity theft protection and mitigation services from Experian, including credit monitoring for 12 months at no cost to you. Okay, there you go. So they're there at go. least getting a free, <laughs> yeah, well, free reach around from Experian. Nice. Thanks. <laughs> right. Here's the lock for your barn after the horse has already left. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, yeah. But, you know, we as we've talked about, I, we've all expressed our frustration on this show about how nobody ever goes to jail. So maybe we'll start seeing some people going to jail. And I think if you're going to get people's attention, that could do it. Um, again, you know, as I said, GDPR has a I believe it's a 72 hour requirement for notification in the EU. And um, the, the notion what, it's with not it's not five years like Uber likes to do. <laughs> right. Well, but again, you know, the notion is that these international companies aren't going to have much choice. They're going to have to adopt the most stringent EU policies. It's going to make the most sense for them. It's going to be cheapest and fastest for them to adopt those policies. So right. there's a lot of people hoping that that's going to have a, a good effect uh, around the world. There are other people who are saying, hey, it's not fair that the EU gets to uh, – you know, have this power over the rest of the world by having their own rules that companies will sort of have to adopt. So it's an interesting discussion on both sides. Yeah. 
very much so. I, I'm I'm very much looking forward to this. Yeah. I, I want this to happen badly. I, it just all these people just seem to be, all these companies just seem to be non culpable. And it, it, it's interesting when this passes in Europe. <laughs> I'm going to choose to do my business with international conglomerates on purpose for once because I would like to know that they're going to be following these rules. So. Yeah. Well, well, Apple had news. a uh, bad week, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Talk about some Apple. Did you guys try this 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 hack that came out this week? I did not uh, try it. I, I patched it. <laughs> <laughs> well, as soon as I saw the news that you could log in as root with no password, the first thing I did was try and log in as root with no password. And? It worked. <laughs> it worked really <laughs> easily. Oh, my goodness. I saw a tweet that I loved, which was, I never, ever want to hear from a fucking Apple person about security again. <laughs> Long live PC. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, how does this one get out? Uh, you know, the, the reporting is saying that uh, this has probably been in High Sierra since the beginning. It may even have been in the betas. And people are saying, well, can you blame, uh, you know, this is not the kind of thing someone would look for. You wouldn't even think that this would be possible. I've been, <laughs> yeah. saying, I've been saying for two years that Apple's quality control has been slipping and slipping and slipping. And this is uh, exhibit A. <laughs> this is a tough one to test for. You got to admit. <laughs> well, is it, you know, <sighs> but here's is the it? thing. You just kind of bring the log up screen and hit enter. <laughs> well, you, here's no, you have to manually <laughs> type in root. So, yeah. But another thing that that puzzles me about it is that it says, you know, type in root and no password and get in. And if it doesn't work, try it again. Well, that's not how computers <laughs> are supposed to work. Right. Right. Well, I think what the first one does is enable like the first time you do it, then it enables root access and sets the password to nothing. And on the second try, the root the root login has been then triggered and ah. then there is no password. So you go. It took me two times to get in. And that's exactly what happened. Interesting. All right. Well, that, that's plausible. That makes sense. Yeah. So I just went and updated my root password right away. And then the next day the patch came out. So they did patch it pretty quickly. And they did that. That thing where they just kind of said, yeah, even if you don't download it, we're going to update your machine for you anyway. Yeah. Which is good. Yeah. My, yeah yes. my understanding is this is only the second time that Apple has done the uh, non-voluntary security update, which I yeah. suppose is a good thing. Uh, it's interesting, too, that there people have been have documented that this showed up on Apple's own support forums about two weeks ago. Yep. <laughs> and nobody paid attention. Because nobody I, yeah. reads the support forums. <laughs> Well, that's the thing. I don't know how much Apple actually monitors those. I, I, my suspicion is they they don't. At least not very much. Yeah. No, not yeah. much. Yeah. Hey, have you ever gotten an actual answer back from anybody at Apple on a support forum? No. It's a bunch of people <laughs> no. going, me too, me too, me too. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I, I mean, I use them. They're, they are helpful to try to track down things. And it's mostly all, it's just community based, you know, where if some, you have, if yeah. you've had a problem, chances are someone else may have had it and have helped track it down. So they're useful for that. But you're correct. Rarely do you ever see anyone, in fact, I'm trying to remember if I've ever seen anyone from Apple actually chime in with an answer. It's interesting. No, I definitely have not. But it is a good way to figure out if the bug is just you, if you're doing right. something stupid or if everybody's got the problem. Right. Right. I think the the uh the my favorite um Apple apologist uh thing that I saw this week and I will say that I am a longtime Apple fan. So I, if anything I am biased to give Apple the benefit of the doubt, but my favorite uh Apple apologist uh, message this week was someone said, well, you know, all these people who are saying that Apple is uh you know, really blew it with this one. Remember that uh, Sony actually put, you know, rooting malware on your computer. Yeah, that's not a good. Well, that's, that's not. A, that's not a good argument. Yeah, yeah. I'm so sorry. That's not, not a good right. argument. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like yeah. Yeah, but Harvey Weinstein did worse than I did. Says Bill <laughs> exactly. Cosby. Exactly. Yeah. It's sort of yeah. Anyway, uh, it's patched, <laughs> and um, the patch broke some stuff, but there's a fix for the stuff that the patch broke, and, <laughs> patch the and patch on the fix. and on and on and on it goes. And it's, yeah, it turtles all the way down. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yay. Okay. Well, the nice thing is that the main machine that I work on, I did not upgrade to High Sierra, so yeah, at least me that neither. one was safe. <laughs> me yeah. neither. I was listening to the Accidental Tech Podcast this week, and I think that's who was talking about it, but... Man, wouldn't mm -hmm. it be nice if Apple went back to a two-year release cycle on their their main OS? 
Just so they would have well, time to actually fix things instead of rushing everything every year because they have this arbitrary need to update every year. It's yeah. not arbitrary. It's shareholder value, Jason. <clears throat> but they give the they give the OS away for free. If they were making money on the OS every year, then I could see a reason to update it all the time. But there's no reason to rebrand every year with a new version of it. Like, fix the one that is there. That way, the one <laughs> after that will be better. But that's what High Sierra was supposed to be. That's why it wasn't it wasn't given a new name. It was give a, given a derivative name from Sierra. You know, they were right, supposed snow, to be it's, doing it's a, a, a TikTok. Right. right. They were gonna, it's a TikTok to have a, this was supposed to be the one that fixes things, that fine tunes <laughs> things, that, you know, and boy, did <laughs> it fix things. <laughs> but you know what? I think, yeah. I think uh, iOS 11 has been problematic as well. It's been oh, a it's lot terrible. of bugs and, uh, yep. you know, unimpressive things. So uh, Apple certainly, I think Brian nailed it. Uh, Apple's certainly struggling with some software issues these days. Um, let's hope it uh, gets better because, uh, boy, this one, it's hard to do much worse. Yep. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's pretty bad, but still, it's the best OS on the market. Even though there are problems, you know, we're kind of spoiled, I think. But yeah, yeah, the whole. But yeah, when I turn my phone sideways, it should rotate. Come on, that's not really a tough one. <laughs> God, oh. you're so needy. I know I am. Oh God, <laughs> I just kind of want it to work the way it did yesterday. <laughs> mm -hmm. By that I mean mm -hmm. work. Okay, right. <laughs> well, we got a little thing here from Facebook. Um, these guys really just want pictures of you all the time now. Mm -hmm. They're right. They're, they've got a thing that they may be doing soon. This is one of those, we might kind of be doing it, but now that it's out in the wild, maybe we won't because everybody's saying, well, huh? what are you talking about now? Uh, they're going to have a new kind of capture to verify whether the user is a real person. So you have to okay. say, <laughs> uh, please upload a photo of yourself that clearly shows your face. We'll check it and then permanently delete it from our servers. How do you know what my Boy, face looks I like? Well, I, that's first right, of all, you know, yeah. I hope that they don't get this mess mixed up with their revenge porn program because I, <laughs> when Facebook asks me to send in a picture of my cock, I'm going to be a little bit disturbed. Hey, yo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Please lift it up so we can see the balls clearly. <laughs> we have yeah, they, our, our new NAD recognition software will verify that it's actually you. It does. I mean, you you brought up a really good point, Jason. Uh, how do they know what we look like anyways? I mean, I guess they're going to base it off of some machine learning from all the photos that we have already uploaded and since oh, sure. they're doing facial recognition there. So of I course. suppose that I mean, that's how. Yeah. But, uh, Facebook but if I'm knows making a fake account, like. yeah, if I'm making right. a fake account, how many thousands of pictures do I have of the person that I'm faking the account with? You know, right. I'm going to have a ton right. of them. Right. I'll mm -hmm. Make a new one. That's what I was thinking is how hard is it to go get a picture of just about anybody these days? Yeah. Upload a picture yeah. of you. Oh, OK. Google image search. Oh, look, there he is. All right. Done. You know, yep. that really slowed what are they going to do? Like, are they going to have to have like proof of life? Like go out and buy a newspaper. Those are it's those pieces of paper that used to have the news on it that people used <laughs> to buy. It has the date on it. And then hold it up next to your face so we can tell you're alive. You know, well, though, right. though, as as I think about it, I mean, maybe that is a, a more challenging thing for an automated system to do, though, to go fetch a photo of you. That might be harder for a bot to do than than a human. Of course, not that human labor is expensive. No. I, yeah. If I was doing it, I would say, OK, use the use the camera on your computer. We're going to send you an email with a QR code. Hold it up next to your face. Smile for the pretty picture. And then we'll look at it. You know, some way to right. verify <laughs> you know, time and authenticity, but I have Photoshop. So I will take a picture of my phone with that QR code on it and paste it into the yes. photo of the person that I'm yes, trying here to Here is Mark personate. Zuckerberg with the QR code. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 20, 25 years of Photoshop. I can make pretty much anything I'm thinking. So mm -hmm. this, this is one of those silly ones, I think. So we'll see if it actually rolls out everywhere. And I'm yeah. sure it's like mainly around spam accounts and setting up advertising accounts and things like yeah. that. Anything with payments. Um, I guess this is, you know, trying, this is their way to try and stop the, the Russian ad bot farmer type of guys. So yeah. Right. see. Yeah. And, uh, so we got this another, another one in from Chris Gibson. He sent this over on Facebook and it's a uh, link to a Gizmodo article that says, watch Steve's hack keyless entry to steal a Mercedes in less than a minute. I watched this and I'm like, well, a guy <laughs> should have put his car in the garage. Cause he obviously has a garage <laughs> and B. <laughs> The Ferrari's uh, in the garage. Crazy. Yeah, that's right. The Ferrari's <laughs> in the garage. So what you do is you break into the Mercedes, press the button to open the garage door, and then steal the Ferrari. Right, exactly. And then to really fuck with him, you put the Mercedes where the Ferrari was. So he thinks maybe if he was drinking last night, he's like, I could have sworn I parked my Ferrari here. <laughs> right, 
Right. It's like that old joke. It's not a Porsche, it's a Ferrari. Yeah, never mind. Hear the old joke about painting the porch. I went, I'm going to give you $50 to paint my back porch. Remember that joke? You guys ever heard that joke? No. It's a dad no. joke. So a guy hires a guy to paint his porch. <laughs> the guy, guy comes, he says, I want you to paint my porch uh, for me. And uh, the guy says, all right, it'll be $50. And all right, here's the paint. Go around back and paint the porch. The guy comes back. He says, all right, we're all done. By the way, that's not a Porsche. That's a Ferrari. But um, bum. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's a dumb dad joke, but there you go. Yeah. Old dad joke. joke's a theme yeah. today. <laughs> yeah. Here, well, here's here's one for you. A uh, guy meets a hooker in an elevator in Vegas and she says, hey, baby, I'll do anything for a hundred bucks. He goes, cool. Here's a hundred bucks. Paint my house. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> that's not a dad joke, though. <clears throat> Oh, okay. the hooker said, the hooker precludes it from being a dad joke <laughs> well i, I did depends say on your dad in vegas <laughs> have you actually met have you met jason's dad i haven't uh, who knows hey, Maybe. No, hey. that's, that's a, this is a, this is a fair point do not do not soil my father's good name my father right. is a good man where i came I'm from sure. we have no idea but <laughs> anyway it's, it's a pretty fun video to watch these guys get into this thing super fast they're basically bouncing the signal from his key fob that's inside the house through a little device mm-hmm. to another fob that's by the car and then right. boom, open open this sesame is, this is not a this is not a new hack this is i think what's new about this is that they got somebody on video i've heard of this probably oh two years ago is probably the first time i heard of it they had video two years ago of guys stealing bmws uh who had cloned the key fob from earlier in the day they came back right. and replayed the key fob in front of the car yeah. basically got in. So this is kind of the same thing. It's just like yeah. now they figured out a way to get it from the fob in the house. Right. That's a, but that I've heard of that as well. The, the whole thing of getting, you know, sort of walking around the house to get a signal from the automatic fob. Um, yeah. Yep. I guess you could just buy a tow truck. Just drag it <laughs> away. <laughs> yeah, or, you know, crowbar. We have those things. <laughs> Brick. 30 cents yeah. at uh, Home Depot. <laughs> anyway old school uh so I, I saw this one on motherboard and i thought this was fantastic television's most infamous hack is still a mystery 30 years later this is about the broadcast in chicago that was broken into it was a doctor who broadcast and some guy who was in a max headroom mask broke into the signal and basically got spanked on the air it was very right. strange yep it was very, very strange, but nobody's ever caught these guys. I thought that was pretty fun. Yeah, this is an old chestnut. You know, when I first got out of college, I was working in the TV biz, and uh, I actually spent time in Master Control, which is the place where all the videotape machines are and the routers and the satellite uplinks and all that sort of stuff. And I remember having a conversation with a satellite engineer and saying to him, so what keeps you from taking that dish and pointing it at any satellite and just <laughs> blasting it with, uh, with you know, <laughs> RF energy and taking anybody off the air? Because you can see every transponder that everybody's on. You can just sort of bounce around and go, oh, look, ABC is doing their live shots on this and, you know, that mm-hmm. and the other thing. And um, he basically said, uh, well, nothing. I could, t- I, could, I could totally do that. Anybody could totally. So it's sort of, you know, it, it, I guess the thing that keeps you from doing it is knowing that the FCC will come hunt you down because there are a yeah. limited number of people who have satellite uplinks. This story is interesting because they seem to be using uh, microwave transmitters to overpower the – they use microwave to, from the hop from the TV station to the transmitting tower. And so mm. they overpowered that microwave signal. Um, again, takes me back to my college days, again, studying uh, TV at the University of Maryland. Um, evidently, HBO was using a similar microwave hop to feed some cable system in the area. And we had a microwave antenna that you could point in the right direction and get uh, unscrambled HBO on if you knew what you were doing. Nice. Just pull it out of the air. Yeah, the, the antenna oh, looked way like... Way better um, than tinfoil and a coat hanger. <laughs> the antenna looked like Marvin the Martian's gun. Like, it was this long... <laughs> it was this long pole with a bunch of little circles on it. And, uh, you know, the chief engineer at the campus TV station was, you know, basically like, hey, watch this. And I was like, can I borrow that? He was like, sure. So <laughs> we had uh, HBO in our dorm room for a little while. <laughs> nice. nice. Yeah. I, I, I think the statute, statute of limitations, limitations is run up on out. that, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right in my mind. That was before the uh, di- Digital Millennium Copyright Act, so, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah. College pranks, good times. Uh, we didn't get much of that in, in uh, community college. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. You had to go somewhere real for that, I guess. Yeah. 
So we got a little feedback here uh, from, uh, who's this coming from? This comes from Brian Seward, our friend down in Adelaide. Hey, Jason, not sure if you guys or Dave have heard about this site, but aside from fighting the good fight, I thought the UX of the site was pretty interesting, even if Brian made 999 after clinging, <laughs> clicking on the <laughs> what are you control first up. Uh, this is rescam.org. And uh, Brian, first you, off, you checked I, it out. I, I, I... <laughs> I want to talk about the UX of the site as being pretty interesting. Uh, Brian Stewart, Stewart from Adelaide, you might be very young. Maybe you don't remember the early days of the internet, but this is a 1990s website with a flash intro. I have to wait 10 <laughs> seconds for some animation to play before I can click on anything. I'd be off that site in three seconds these days. Like nobody's uh, waiting for the stupid intro. And don't get me started on the AI, AI shit. That yeah. is exactly it, if you click on what are you? It's all our AI will prove that blah, 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 yeah. whatever. <laughs> I mean, the, the days uh, of skip yeah. intro are long gone it seems <laughs> i know that's true but you that's can't true. there's no skip button on this either you well, have to I mean. wait they through it they don't know anymore that every site that had one of these stupid things had to have a skip <laughs> intro button or nobody would go you already lost like twenty thousand people if uh twenty one thousand were coming if you didn't have a skip intro button but it, it the whole thing is silly yes no more intros yeah. on websites the time is gone but the the purpose of this website is actually kind of uh fun Yes. Well, tell us about it, Dave. <laughs> uh, don't don't mind if I do, Jason. So well, I'd appreciate uh, it, there, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen to this. Um, basically, you send them your scammy emails, and then they use their system to engage with a automated back and forth with the people who are trying to scam you. So they right. adopt personalities and pretend to be interested in the scam. The whole idea being that they're going to use up the bandwidth of the scammers by just sort of stringing them along with uh, artificial responses so it, I, you know uh, all right uh, it's fighting the good fight yeah it is a good fight I was say, until the scammers sign up for it start to get the emails back run it through deep learning on their side so they can find out when anybody's using it and then start keep sending you emails from a different instance to keep you busy while they go after somebody who really cares you know well yeah. it's it's always an arms race isn't it, um, it, it but, yeah yes. I, I mean, it is the good fight just the bad website <laughs> <laughs> right right <laughs> All right. Well, one more thing. Uh, I want to uh, do a plug for a new podcast. There are 10 episodes in. It's called Things Joe Hates uh, by a, a friend of the Cyberwire. Uh, folks who listen to the Cyberwire may recognize the uh, voice of the uh, gentleman, Joe, who hosts this podcast. Uh, Joe's trying to uh, not make a direct connection between his professional Cyberwire stuff and this podcast. Uh, but if you're a regular listener of the Cyberwire, you probably recognize his voice. And I figure anyone who's listening to a show called Grumpy Old Geeks may enjoy Things Joe Hates. Um, and it's actually... <laughs> what it's tipped actually, you off? Yeah, well, I was just going out on a limb there, but uh, it's quite entertaining. Uh, so uh, short shows, you know, under 20 minutes typically, and uh, if you like to hate things as much as Joe does, you'll uh, like it. So uh, give it a listen. Uh, he's off to a good start, and I think uh, it'd be worth checking out. Awesome. I checked out a few of these a while back. It was very funny, so definitely, it's definitely worth a listen. Yeah. Yes. All right, gentlemen. Well, until next week, I'm going to go log into my yes. uh, High Sierra laptop. In fact, I'm going to go log into everybody's <laughs> High Sierra laptop. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. See you all next week. Brick a brick. Ah, it's the most wonderful time of the year, isn't it? Um, uh, a bunch of my parent friends have been sharing this link recently, and it's it's like grumpy old parents. If if we did if we did a mommy blog, this is the WTF guide to the 2017 Pottery Barns Kids Holiday Catalog, and this very funny woman basically tears them a new a hole, and it's hilarious. You do not have to be a parent to read this. Uh, one quick sample: Want to give the gift of passive aggressiveness and a broken spirit to your children? Let your kids know who their favorite is by buying this pillow for just one of your offspring. Merry <laughs> Christmas. Nice, nice. I don't know if you saw the the uh, it was basically an image I posted on Facebook that was a uh, a holiday guide to keeping your kids in line. Yes, I did see that. Where you 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 wrap a bunch of empty boxes so when when your kid acts up, you take one and just throw it in the fireplace in front of them and let it burn. That's a good parenting say, hack. <laughs> it is a good parenting hack. Moron of the week. Brian, I generally don't go to Applebee's nope. anymore. Nope. It used to be a family thing around here. My family would always make me go to Applebee's. And I thought it was okay. It wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. Uh, and apparently it has gotten much worse. But now, now, <laughs> you can go and get a $1 Long Island iced tea for the rest of the year. 
And the only the only way I can put this is it must be a memory loss leader, because then if you drink enough of them, Applebee's food must taste like not so awful and you'll want to go back. Puking good in the neighborhood. I, they've got to have a limit on these. There's a, there, there's no way their lawyers let them just do this. this uh, you come in and have two. Let's go. <laughs> I can't imagine. Yeah. Anyways. All right. Well, some asshole on an airplane caused a problem. Uh, he named his uh, Wi-Fi network bomb on board. Genius. Genius. Such a genius. Yep. So they had to land the plane and, of course, take him off. So oh, that's, uh, that's awesome. And it was, it, was, it was amazing that they could find him. But here, here's a, you know, if you really want to get under, uh, get somebody in trouble, bar their phone when they're not looking and basically set up an ad hoc network on their phone yeah. with something like this. <laughs> yeah. And then, off they go and they get on the plane, they get dragged off. I'm like, what'd I do? Yeah. <laughs> well, proving that there are no uh, true geniuses out there. This actually isn't even the first time that this has happened uh, at Los Angeles International Airport in 2014. A flight was delayed for several hours when somebody named their Wi-Fi network the Al-Qaeda Free Terror Network. And uh, nice. last year, one Vir Virgin American flight was delayed and another was canceled after someone named a Wi-Fi network Samsung Galaxy Note 7 because that's when they were Genius. blowing up. Yes. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. And now there is a San Francisco company, of course, a startup called Hivim. Hivim. It's HVMN because, you know, you can't have any vowels in San Francisco and it's supposed to be human. Uh, this is backed by former Yahoo CEO Marissa Mayer because she just can't, you know, the hits just don't stop with her. <laughs> exactly. Uh, <laughs> it's a, it advertises a $40 a bottle supplement biohacking compounds that will help people achieve optimal human performance. Uh, speaking of uh, the previously mentioned Tim Ferriss, probably be right behind this stuff, uh, it says that <laughs> supplements such as chewable caffeine pills help the human system become quantified, optimized, and upgraded. And at one point, CEO <laughs> Jeffrey Wu went so, as far... Somebody needs a dictionary. You don't need a pill. <laughs> well, CEO Jeffrey Wu went as far as to describe Hoovoon's products as unlocking next-level thinking that will be the key to humanity's evolution. In a way, yeah. it's almost arming humanity against artificial intelligence and robots, <laughs> Wu told Bloomberg. <laughs> then, we discuss CNBC discovered that they actually uh, commissioned a, a clinical trial uh, themselves, and they found out that their supplements were less effective in many ways than a cup of coffee. Then... The company decided not to publicize the study and tried to bury it and asked researchers to change the name of the product to distance it from Hvvvvvn. So, fuck you, Hvvvvvn. You know what the problem is, Jason? What? You know they won't go out of business. They'll probably get more funding. Oh, yeah. No, now that they've got the press, you know. What a world. Uh, uh, speaking of speaking of fun things, mm -hmm. I just saw this one right before we went to air, and oh, Walmart yeah. is in the news. They're yanking all T-shirts made by Teespring because there's a third-party deal, and Teespring basically stepped on their own dick by not being able to police their own system, and there were uh, T-shirts such as Rope Tree Journalist, and some very, very racist ones that got through. Lots of racist ones. Lots and, and lots of lots racist of, ones. Yeah. Oh, the the whole shirt is uh, rope tree journalist. Some assembly required, by the way. Yes. And yeah. So Teespring's like we have multiple layers of you know protections against this thing, and these just got through because they have you know of course machine learning and AI bots that scrub all the content, and then there are humans that watch it. I'm guessing all of those uh, Filipino VAs just can't read english because it's pretty straightforward <laughs> yeah this is hard to miss it's just the words mm -hmm. right there together although i have to give him a high five for the uh bill cosby drinks on me ladies shirt <laughs> nice. i do like that one feedback loop we've got a bunch of new patreon and paypal peoples this week we got jamie h lawrence de b Nicholas W. on Patreon, and from PayPal, Bill and John S. and Jacob F. And we have some notes from these folks. Would you like to drop those up there, Brian? Sure. Bill says, Brian and Jason, I am contacting you from the year 2013. It is September 7th, and I've just finished listening to episode 24. <laughs> I am one of those people that feel the need to start from the beginning, so I've started listening to your podcast from episode one. I can't listen to podcasts like Jason, two times squirrel mode, so it may take a little while. <laughs> yes, it's going to. <laughs> I appreciate the nostalgia and how much things have changed. Yet stayed the same, I would say, Bill. Um, mm. I will drop some money in the till, and you did, so thank you, and give you guys a five star, if that still matters, in the future. Yes, it does, so thank you very much. 
Uh, John S. said, your show rocks. Thanks. And Jacob You're S. Welcome. said, hey, guys, heading off to Kuwait for a while, so I won't be able to download the podcast as regularly as I'd like. To make up for it, I'm making my first ever donation. Keep up the good work. Thanks, Jacob, and thank you for your service. I'm assuming that's what you're going to Kuwait for, not holiday. All right. And over on Twitter, 6502 Chip says, these guys discuss Instagram overhearing them and placing ads on their feed. Okay. Fake news. (laughs) Fake news. Okay, yeah, we've been there, we've been down there. Been there, road. been there, done that. Uh, ben Stanley said, "Sad week this week," and he sent us a little picture of no new Grumpy Old Geeks podcast. Sorry, yeah. hey, sorry, we had to take a break. Yeah, <laughs> and the Wobster <laughs> sent us a joke. Daughter, why was six for eight to seven? Me rolling my eyes because seven, eight, nine. Daughter, but why did seven do that? Me, huh? Daughter, because he was supposed to get three squared meals a day. Oh my God, how oh. have I never heard that one before? That's pretty good. I liked it. <laughs> God, you really do like dad jokes now. That's I totally scary. do. I don't know. It's like some weird genetic thing that just happens. <sighs> All right. Clue and Vaz sent us two things. Sweden, the virtual residence of every grumpy old geek, and a shot of Tunnelblick uh, connected to Sweden. I'm assuming that's his VPN of choice. Uh, yes. And he also said, I remember sometime back you mentioned on the podcast a Mac app to optimize the MacBook's battery life and charge it correctly. Do you remember what it was? Hashtag help. Fruit juice. Fruit juice. Yes, that's, that's right. It's called fruit juice. Uh, you can get it in the Mac app store, I believe. Yep. Um, it's, a, it's a great app. I actually use it on all my laptops. And I have noticed that the charge does get better over time if you follow the instructions. Yes, uh, I have as well. I'm still running it as well. So uh, Cryptic Blam sent us all look. It's your fave. And it's a screenshot of uh, a headline. That has AI in it and the first line of the body of text switching over to machine learning. <laughs> nice. Yes. That's the way to go here. And Nathan Reitzma writes in, FB Purity Rocks, thanks for the recommendation. Another GOG home run. Now if we can get them to make an IG Purity for Instagram, just a chrono the timeline. Yep, not going to happen. Uh, finally, a boy clawed his way out of 20 plus years of manufacturing and into something more techy, sort of. And he sends us a picture of basically himself on a big billboard that he was promoted to the help desk. Congratulations. This next one comes from Mr. Dom says, after taking a break from GOG podcast, I'm subscribed again, hoping for less political bile. Fuck Trump. Well, <laughs> you take it as you get it around here. <laughs> you take it as you get it. We, we've laid off of it a lot, but hey, it's a pretty good day today, right? Hey, hey, flip boy. <laughs> <laughs> what you going to do there? And All 6502 right. Chip also writes in, the porns are invading LinkedIn, and sends us a screenshot of some pornage action over there. I'm like, finally, LinkedIn might be useful now. <laughs> Maybe. And Sin Delicato sent, just heard this term for the first time while listening to GOG podcast at two times. I'm assuming yes. oh, this is in relation to pod faster. I've listened to yeah. podcasts at 2x since my iPhone 3GS eight years. It's how I stay informed. All right. Well, keep on pod fasting us. Uh, Listen to our and- pod fast faster and the next one comes from alan also about pod fasting he says about the pod fasting i had to smile at that as a blind person i'm quite used to fast speech though usually it's computer generated speech as in the output from a screen reader the fastest it speaks the more i can do up to a point too fast and i go looking for the rate control gotcha and these are coming to us from gog.show now monkey 13 wrote us i guess a bobcat can't hear a prius coming either with a link to a story (laughs) about a bobcat surviving a 50 mile trip to richmond stuck in a car grill nice all right, this next one comes from Julio Aldana. He says, hi, guys, and he writes us a nice little intro about how he found the show and how Leo Laporte is uh, persona non grata in his ear holes now. Uh, but anyway, to the question at hand, in your turkey episode, <laughs> you know, we had a turkey episode, uh, you guys were talking about browsers and how Opera is your browser of choice. Why is that? I've tried Opera on and off over the years, and I never quite liked it myself. The last time might have been three years ago or so. And so most sites that I visit wouldn't load properly on Opera, so it would always go back to Chrome. Now that I'm wearing off of Google services, I quite like the new Firefox and was just wondering about your reasons for using Opera and if I should give it another chance. Looking forward to your response. Yes, we switched to Opera months ago now. Yeah, he said uh, turkey episode because that's what he listened to over Thanksgiving, Jason. Not that we have oh, a turkey gotcha. episode. Yeah, okay. uh, well, yeah I mean, Opera, we're, we're, we're a couple of turkeys. So yeah, we, we, we both switched over to Opera a couple of months ago. It's great now. It's very fast. Uh, we switched before the new Firefox came out. Um, I tried the new Firefox, as I think I talked about in that very episode. And it's great, too. But I can only do one or two browser changes a year because I burn out. So Opera's fine, runs great. Every site I've been to loads perfectly. In fact, I had problems loading Google Analytics in Chrome, and it worked fine in Opera, which is hilarious. (laughs) So uh, yeah, Firefox also seems very, very good, very, very fast. 
but Opera's right up there with it, and I don't feel like switching again right now. <laughs> yeah, and the upside is this is a complete uh, rewrite of Opera that they did not too long ago, and it uses you can use Chrome extensions on it, which is very handy. The yep. only thing that's happened in the past couple of weeks here now, though, is I've got a list of the extensions, so my one password extension is right next to the URL bar, and I'm having a hell of a time clicking on that nowadays. It like moves around a little bit when I try and click on it. I have noticed that as well. I've had to like if I just like basically I don't try one click anymore. I just like hammer it with three or four clicks and it always opens. Uh, but it, yeah. is a, it is a weird little bug right now. Yeah. OK. I'm glad I'm not the only one that had that. Yeah. It's no. annoying. Uh, next up from Chance. Hey, guys. Love the show. In previous episodes, I know you have talked a bit about YouTube kids and the various problems that there are with the both ads and content. I came across this article on TechCrunch and wondered if you guys had seen it. The only thing is it's a subscription service, and I know how much you guys love those. And it's an article talking about a new service called Jellies, which is a subscription service that has uh, kids programming in it. So I'm looking into this stuff more and more all the time because some of the ads that are getting thrown in watching Sesame Street videos and things like that are, are for adults. And it's, Punish your ads. It's like weird, <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, but so I looked at Jellies. I looked at the site. And man, they do not provide much information at all. I don't know what's included. It, does it have Sesame Street stuff? Does it have Little Einstein? Uh, does it have, you know, because your kids get into certain things and that's what they want to see. So I can't tell what Jellies is providing. I, I don't know where they're getting their content from. Is it all homegrown or do, or do they license it? I don't know. Their site doesn't tell me. I'd happily pay for a service that gave me quality, well-known children's programming on demand with the ability to create playlists and things like that and no ads. Good fucking luck with that. I can't find anything like that anywhere. I've been looking a bit into YouTube kids. I'm going to give that a go next week. But as far as I understand, there are still ads. It's just they've run the ads theoretically, probably just through a machine learning thing. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what YouTube's kids is going to be like. But again, I, I looked at Jelly's. I want want a list of programming i want to i want a trial i want to see what kind of stuff you're i'm going to be paying for and they don't provide any of that which is fucking weird right weird there's no trial in this day and age you gotta be kidding me no trial and no like no uh, go to their site they show you nothing like they don't give a okay. list they don't show they don't show any any sample programming i have no clue what i'd be getting if i paid for that do you have to pay in the uh, kid coin <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right, next one we got here from Sutton, a.k.a. Ringer Zero. Hey, guys, I applaud your show and highly recommend your podcast to all my associates and cohorts. You guys say out loud what I wish I could say during meetings. I was for <laughs> The reason we can say it out loud is because we got fired. Because <laughs> We've all been fired. Meetings. <laughs> <laughs> I was first introduced to your show by Dave Bittner, the Cyberwire guy. As an information security professional and executive, I especially appreciate the security hop portion of the show. I wanted to give you guys a tip on a show that I find most entertaining that you may want to include in Media Candy. It's called Travelers on Netflix and reminds me of the X-Files before it jumped the shark with Agent Doggett. Keep up the good work. Uh, I can't remember if I've seen this show. I'm going to have to go dig it up. It sounds familiar. It does sound familiar, but I don't know if I've seen it or not yet either. Yeah, thanks to autoplay, I will not be loading it right now. <laughs> yes, we will take a look at it. That. Uh, next up is from Panphilius. Thought you'd find this interesting, and he sent us a link. Volvo to supply Uber with up to 24 thousand driverless cars uh, and he says you called it first so yeah we kind of did uh but i did read through the article the self-driving system that would be used in the volvo cars which have yet to be built is under development by uber's advanced technologies group gm's got these things on the road they haven't even built theirs yet so and yeah don't even don't even mention tesla <laughs> yes and right, yes tesla which basically is at the point where if he can press a button and all the cars will just become self-driving cars <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next, let's move over to some iTunes. Five stars from Helios247. Gold star. You guys are great. Format is fantastic and your reviews are concise and knowledgeable. <laughs> Sometimes. Mm, sometimes. No, concise. Sorry, we're trying to keep this to an hour show and I can already tell it's a two hour show. <laughs> All right. Next, uh, Cam, uh, another five star rating from Fafin in Australia. Jason has sandworms. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> uh, this week's episode 236 is funnier than the normal Chuckler episodes. This one is making it hard to drive straight. Well, get yourself one of those GM cars, buddy. <laughs> yep. Keep up the good work. Hopefully my car continues to compensate for my inattentive driving and then takes me under its care after the uprising. <laughs> if you want to play cards against humanity, just hold the opponent's hand up to your China cam <laughs> and wait for them to hack your Alexa so they can tell you which card they are playing. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thank that you. That is awesome. That's very funny. <laughs> uh, if you watch your question or comment read on the show, head over to GOG.show slash support and and send us your feedback or questions that we can read on the air. And if you're so inclined, please do head over to GOG.show slash iTunes and toss us a five star and a snarky review. And as always, tell all of your friends, all of them, all of them. We want all of them.
So my closing shout out is to a card game I can't even play. <laughs> Cards Against Humanity's uh, <laughs> Christmas dealio is out. And I can't remember if we talked about it on the last episode before we went dark. But I did get to sign up for the seven days of Christmas. And this morning I got my first letter in the mail, which is my deed to the point zero 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 six seven percent of land that I'm using to help stop the border wall, which is very fun. Uh, yes. A big a map, nice. a big map and a letter from the lawyer and a little packet of cards to go with Cards Against Humanity that will probably be going to somebody else since I don't play. <laughs> but it's very funny. All right. And that, that is awesome. And my shout out goes to Michael Flynn. Uh, Michael Flynn, who said, if I did a tenth of what she did, referring to Hillary Clinton, I would be in jail today. <laughs> and guess who's going to jail as of today? Lock him up. Lock him up. <laughs> but his meetings... <laughs> Until next time, I'm Brian Schulmeister. And I'm Jason DeFilippo. Thanks for listening to Grumpy Old Geeks. To support the show and keep us on the air, go to patreon.com slash GOG. Toss us a buck a month and we'll love you forever. If you'd like to give a one-time donation, go to GOG.show and click the PayPal button in the sidebar. Show notes for this episode are at GOG.show slash 237. From there, you can find links to old episodes, leave feedback, ask questions, and get links to stuff we like. Stay grumpy, and we'll see you next week. Nothing? No. <laughs> Sounded like you were winding <laughs> up for I already one. said like 19 times, <laughs> I hate this fucking movie. <laughs> <laughs>